Today on the Skid Factory, it's time to get that Datsun difference. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. This is Timmy's 1981 Datsun Bluebird. It's powered by a Nissan VQ35 turbo engine, makes about 550 horsepower, and it goes pretty good. We did a build review on it in its current form not long ago. You could probably find it here. Today, we're gonna to upgrade that turbo, put a better wastegate on it, put some bigger pipes through, and send it to the Hoff to make some more power. Let's get stuck into it. You can hear it now. Traditional to drink beer when it hails. <laughs> Put some ice in your lemon squash. Welcome to Queensland. Sweating one minute, hailing the next. This is a good example of how you can save yourself a lot of time and effort just by having a bit of forethought. Um, this stud, because it's that little bit too long, you can't put the ring over it. So you can't get it undone, but you can't get at it because the turbo's there. So we've had to take the actual core out of, the super core out of the housing. Would have been, would have been a lot easier if that stud was just cut down a bit more, so. You kind of got to do that when you're building it in the first place. Didn't you build these manifolds? Uh, I did build them originally, but it was a T3 flange turbo then, so it, that flange has been added. And it's also had heaps of turbos put on it, so who knows how many studs it's had. Probably wasn't a problem. I don't know whether Timmy bolted it on when it was out of the car or what, but it wasn't fun. So it's not a stock stud VQ30 then? It is a stock stud VQ30. Sure? I think they might even be Toyota studs because I used to use them all the time just for shits and gigs. World's fastest Toyota studded VQ30. Turbo. VQ35, I should say. VQ35 hybrid. Big block. The turbo's bolted up, although it's physically a lot bigger than the, the turbo that we took off it, it actually lined up pretty well. We just had to mess around with a few um, just plumbing fittings and the usual stuff. It's, uh, it's all on there and plumbed up now. Uh, just working on the dump pipe, it's all tacked up. It's, there's actually a fair bit of room there. The V6 is pretty narrow, so 
It's four inch out of the turbo, and um, Timmy wants to shrink it down to three and a half inch. So we're going to do that here because we've got no more four inch bends, so we don't have a choice. Just working with what we've got. So what I've done is make this this straight bit of pipe here uh, longer than it needs to be. So I can then sort of throw that up there and go, yes, that's obviously hanging way too low down, but we need to know the floor height. So once I hold that up like that, I can see that it's probably about 75 mil from the floor. So if we take about 65 mil off this straight bit of pipe, then do it again and we can see what we need. If you don't have a pipe there, you don't really know where the thing's gonna sit. So we start with one that's a bit too long and then we can trim it off. Watch the Juco, brother. It wasn't meant to do that. You distracted me. It's a bit annoying having to do this last little kick bit before the bozo pipe. But it sort of works out all right. You like that? Which way? That Out this way? Or? Yeah. We'll have to go it. straight up, otherwise it might... Can we split it into like twin one-inch pipes? Might hit something on the track. I like that. That'll be sick. The exhaust is all finished. We started at four inch out of the turbo and reduced it down into a three and a half inch exhaust system. This is all 304 tube and bends. Uh, the, the mufflers look to me to be 409, which is a lesser grade, but it's also nicer to weld. Uh, we've got a mount here. Normally on, on something like this, I would mount that uh, front pipe there to the gearbox, uh, sort of solidly mount it. Uh, without a rubber mount but in this case it's got a power glide in it and things end up all funky and the gearbox is way up there somewhere and there's nowhere to mount it so I've just um, rubber mounted it in this case. You can see where it's been welded onto the stainless I've, I've just doubled up with another slice of pipe um, that just spreads out the sort of load for the mount so you don't have just that weld on that pipe. If there was to be any Un vibrations that the, the piping doesn't like, which does happen. Um, it would uh, it would go straight into there and crack that pipe. So by spreading it out, you uh, reduce the chance of that happening. Particularly important in a diesel engine where it's vibrating, or an SR20 where it's really really vibrating. We've got a catalytic converter in there. Uh, it's a three and a half inch body, uh, four inch, three and a half inch inlet, four inch body. There's no such thing as ceramic cats anymore, but you'd probably want something like a one or 200 CPI, so cells per inch for an engine like this. Otherwise, it's probably going to just get blocked up anyway. Uh, we've got V-bands everywhere. These are, are now really commonly available and um, not really expensive, so you may as well have a V-band rather than, a, than a, an old school flange. They're much less likely to have leaking problems. Mufflers straight through. 
Uh, we're going under the diff. That's the way the exhaust was before. Uh, this car would have it would have went over the diff originally, but it would have also had like an inch and three quarter pipe on it. So obviously you've got to you've got to make allowances for the fact that the tubing is so much bigger than it would have been from the original car. Uh, and we've got another just a sort of straight through barrel at the back, rubber mounts. I've got a little Benny trick here with a with a clever spin or an R clip to stop the mounts falling off. At the back, it's just a, a really simple. Um, cotton reel studded mount that screwed into an original hole that was in the um, chassis rail there and just a bit of flat bar. Dumpy tip, we've got our optional uh, Bozozoku tip. Uh, please write in the comments that I've said that wrong and that you know everything about Japanese culture even though you're a white kid from Ipswich. A couple more jobs to do before we send it off to the Hof for a tune. Uh, the wastegate, we are going to replace that. Uh, Timmy reports that it is leaking at idle all the time. Uh, it's got a um, stainless steel body, but it's got a, a mild steel or lesser quality seat, and it's actually corroded the valve, so there's, the ceiling is not there anymore. Um, that affects noise, of course, but it also affects the spool of the turbo, and being, being that the turbo is a lot bigger now, you, you, you want to sort of stamp that out. So we're going to replace it with an EX44, uh, go fast bits wastegate. Uh, we quite often use EX50s, which is this one. You can see the biggest difference in them, apart from the obviously valve size, is there's a big difference in physical size of them. So, in the case of Timmy's car, it's already been built. It had a valve about this size on it, so we're, we're sort of pressed for space. So, and also the actual runner going to the gate is something that we can't change right now easily. So. It, it sort of determines how big the, of a wastegate we actually need. This will work fine at the boost pressure that this turbo is going to run. This is a complicated sort of thing, figuring out what sort of uh, wastegate to run. We normally just go for the biggest one because you know that it's gonna, not going to be a problem. But if you've got space issues, which many cars do, um, this valve here will still flow quite a lot of gas and... If you're running a higher boost pressure on a smaller engine, then that's going to work perfectly fine. If you are running a very large engine at low boost pressure, it may not be big enough, but um, you've got to kind of work that out for yourself. Every engine is different, turbo, exhaust housing, it, there's so many variables. So um, that's the two options that we normally use. They both work great. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is replace the the bracket that's holding on the boost control solenoid. Uh, if you've ever worked with MAC valves before, you'll know how mm -hmm. they are to try and mount. The, the, they're not meant to be on a car. They're actually a pneumatic valve that's usually used in automated machinery or on trucks for pneumatics. So um, mounting them has always been a bit of a problem. Until now, Raceworks have got these mounts. Uh, these things are excellent. We used one on my crown to mount the three-port valve. This one is for a four port, which is what Timmy has on the car. Uh, you can see it's a, a billet piece, bolts on, and then the actual valve uh, screws through into it. And so they're a godsend if you're into that sort of thing. We're also gonna put a SV52, a blow off valve onto it. It's gonna run fairly big boost pressure and it's a fairly large turbo. So it's basically just a making sure that the turbo is not going to get damaged. You can damage the tips of a turbo. Billet turbos are better because of the way that they're machined, but it, it still can be a problem. So having that um, blow-off valve or bypass valve on there uh, sort of ensures that that's not going to be a problem. Let's fit her up.
Shout out to Dave. I think we've pretty much got everything ticked off the list apart from wrapping that dump pipe. We don't have any wrap on us, so we're going to have to leave that up to Timmy uh, prior to the dyno. It's easy to get off with those V-bands, so it shouldn't be a problem for him to do in the Timmy, garage. Timmy loves getting fiberglass on his yes, arms Yes, that also may be a, a factor, the us not wanting to be itching for days. Uh, the bob's all mounted up. We've got it plumbed into the back of the plenum hat there, as it's supposed to be. Uh, these... SV52s have an, an adjustment or have scales of adjustment that you can use. There's two different springs. You either use one or two springs and then there's a, a bunch of different bolt lengths and that's to get the... Basically, you just want that to be shut at idle but only just. Uh, they work the best when they're just set up for that, not as tight as you can and just making a lot of noise. That's not really what they're supposed to be for. So in the instructions, there's a whole scale of, of basically it's a manifold vacuum. You change it around depending on how much manifold vacuum you've got. So um, we've still got bolt adjustment in there. I think we got the right spring in there. So um, once we get it started, we'll be able to see if it's not floating off its seat, then we'll know we got the right bolt in there. We've got our Raceworks uh, oil catch can, we'll breathe the tank and the um, radiator overflow mounted up. They're looking pretty swish there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ones of both of these in the, the Raceworks catalogue. So you kind of got to go through there and have a bit of a look at the measurements and stuff. Every engine bay, every engine's different. So there's round ones, there's square ones, there's long ones, there's all sorts. These fitted pretty well. They've got a bit of spare space over this side. We've kind of moved them over from being on that side where the, all the heat is over to this side, just more practical. Apart from that, we're just about ready to fire it up and see what it sounds like. We've pre-oiled the turbo. That's basic minimum of what you should do when you've got a brand new turbo that's probably dry um, just for, for, so it doesn't get damaged on startup. An engine like this is probably going to get oil pressure instantaneously anyway, but just in case, just get the oil can and pump it in and then seal it back up again. We also sometimes pull off the drain and make sure there's oil coming out, depending on how easy it is to get to and whether you can get at the top of the turbo sometimes they're buried underneath things and you can't actually get at it to, to pre-oil it so um, as long as you're sure there's oil going through it then you should be sweet about ready to, to fire it up and see what it sounds like yeah those moo sounds hopefully it doesn't move because of the turbo that's that's kind of the plan it's that's about it's about the only way you can make them sound good so if you're watching and you've got a vq Get a turbo on that bad boy quick smart. It still moves.
must be untuned. Must be untuned. That about wraps it up for the upgrades on Timmy's Datto. Uh, we're very happy to help Timmy. He's always been there to help us when we needed it and um, happy to repay the favour. Uh, and I also encourage you guys, if you've got a skill that your mate doesn't have and he needs a bit of help and just give him a bit of time, you'll be amazed the difference it makes to people's mental health having that support from a friend. Uh, this is gonna head off and hit the dyno under the watchful eye of the Hoff, and then I guess it's gonna end up at a track at some point. Uh, we're pretty keen to see both of those events. The little VQ, it's been in there for a long time. It's had a lot of uh, iterations, I suppose. That might be a fancy word, uh, but she's still going and always improving, and that's pretty much what messing with cars is all about. So, I guess we'll see you next time. And as always, thanks for watching. Is it alterations or iterations? Iterations. But alterations like you're changing something, but iterations upgrading, is that right? Iteration is like a stage. Oh yeah, that's right. Iterations, yeah. stages. Okay. Get me a lemon squash. Please. Everybody always wanting a bigger turbo. I like big turbos. I like billet. I like ball bearings. Welcome back to the skid, the skid, the skid, skid, skid factory. Factory, factory, factory. This is Timmy's 1981 Datsun Bluebird. Bluebird, Bluebird, Datsun Bluebird, Bluebird. It's powered by a VQ30 turbo. No, it's not. VQ35. One shot, one opportunity. Seek everything you ever want. 12 shot, 12 shot. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. This is Timmy's f***ing car. When do you deserve to die? Don't you mean 80? Oh no, quick math, other way around. What? Sorry, I'm a derp tired. <laughs> <laughs> when you shout out, you don't have to shout at me, you can just say shout what? out. What? <laughs> shout out to Dave! <laughs> Where'd you get that from? <laughs> the floor. Is it Lynx Africa? No, it's Rexona. Is it Rexona for men? What flavour? 48 hour. Original, 48 hour flavour? Original flavour. Nice. Hey team, like and subscribe or else Al's gonna give you the boot. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. <laughs>